So let's talk about what we can do to protect your health and safety. Probably one of the most important things we can talk about are the springs on the press. Those springs are under a lot of tension and we want to know what spring you have so that you do not get injured by a spring. Many of the manufacturers use a heat tempered spring in order to be able to lift the weight of the screens. The problem with heat tempering is along with the good, that is that you can lift the heavy screens, there's bad. Heat tempering of metal makes metal brittle and subject to fracture. People have those kinds of springs when they lift the screen or bring the screen down, may have that spring suddenly fracture and pieces of steel fly through the air and you can suffer very serious injury. So you want to know what those springs are. And if you have purchased, for example, a used press and you have these small, tightly woven springs that have been heat tempered, cover them. Or put a wire or rope or something through it and tie that off so those pieces of steel cannot fly through the air. Some of the manufacturers recognize that risk and so they wrap their springs with some sort of like a shrink wrap to protect you, the consumer. There are some manufacturers who know they have a problem and don't disclose it. So be very alert to the potential problem. In our case, we do not wrap the springs. We don't have to because we do not allow our springs to be heat tempered. In the spring business, those springs are referred to as music wires, soft drawn steel, and in 30 years of building thousands of presses, we've never had a spring break. So we can handle big screens, we can handle little screens, and even bigger than this, all with the same spring arrangement because when we want to go to heavy screens like this, all we do is tell the customer to rotate these silver nuts, which is part of our patented spring tension control. By rotating those nuts, we can adjust for the size and weight of the screen. So that's how we have addressed it. But make sure that your springs are safe so you don't get hit by flying steel. So that's the first concern. The second concern is spray adhesive. There are different kinds. There's a mist spray, and if you take the mist spray and spray on the platen, not only do you get the adhesive on the platen, but you get overspray. You're inhaling that. If you think secondhand smoke is bad for your health, what about adhesives? They're worse. So you don't want adhesives in your lungs. But that's the risk with spray adhesive. So if you're going to use spray adhesive, spray and take a hike until the spray has settled down and there's no spray in the atmosphere. Besides mist, there's another type called web. The web doesn't put as much adhesive in the air, but the adhesive comes out in clumps. So you have a very big glob of adhesive here, and maybe one there, but maybe insufficient adhesive in between. A lot of shops like the web adhesive because when lint builds up, rather than clean the platen, which is what they should do, but they don't want to take the time to do that, they instead spray adhesive on top of the lint. And that's why they're using the web because it's, it's, it's more adhesive. And then of course with all that adhesive down, you may have adhesive stuck on the inside of the shirt. You could go to a roll-on type adhesive, but that has to dry before you can use it, then you're losing production time. So that's not very satisfactory either. Well, none of those solutions that I've just given you sound very good uh, as, as productive solutions or as safe solutions. So we came up with what's known as double tape. This is a product we developed. And what this is, it's a plastic sheet with adhesive on both sides of the plastic and paper on both sides. So you pull off one piece of paper and then you lay the sheet down that's what this is on here now. And then you pull off the other piece of paper. Our customers tell us that they typically are able to get 1,400 prints per sheet. So there's nothing in the air to inhale. It's, to, it's dry at all times. Now, when we do a lot of printing, we're going to have lint build up. So what do we do? We take a spray bottle of plain water. We spray the platen, run our, our hand around, and the lint will roll up in little balls. Then we take a rag and we just dust, dust those lint balls into the waste can. And that takes care of the lint. It removes it and dries the platen at the same time. 
So we always have a nice smooth platen, no lumps and bumps, and we have a cleaner environment in which to work. You can have lint in your shop for uh, reasons such as handling lots of shirts. And the solution to that is you get a fan like this one, which is about two foot by two foot. Then you go to the hardware store and you buy a furnace filter. I took this one out of the garbage. This is rated between one and five microns. And it will pull the lint out of the air if you tape it to the front of the fan and draw the air through the filter. In a small shop with one or two presses, you might have four or five of those hanging from the ceiling with the electrical cords going down the wall, plug into the wall. So there's no electrical cords on the floor, which would be a tripping hazard. So that will continually clean the air if you keep those fans going during the day. You can have lint from your conveyor dryer, so you want to make sure that there's a vent on top of the conveyor and venting the lint out of the building. At least once a year you should take that vent down and clean the pipe so that you remove any fire hazard. So those are the lint issues. There's some other issues too. One is ergonomics. When you reach across the screen to hold your squeegee, what's the angle between your arm and your body? Right now, this screen is actually too high for my health. It should be lower so that when I reach across, the angle between my arm and body is 45 degrees or less. And that puts less pressure on your wrists and elbows. If you put too much pressure on your wrists and elbow, you'll probably get carpal tunnel syndrome because of the repeated motion and the repeated, repeated pressure. Other things you can do to help yourself, install a fluorescent light right above the screen where you're registering so you can see clearly what you're doing. Have a pad to stand on. If you don't own a pad, take a cardboard carton and crush it, tape it to the floor. So there's a little spring underneath your feet. It'll make it uh, easier on your legs. Flash dryers. Flash dryers should be on casters. So if someone bumps it, it rolls. It doesn't tip. You don't want to have a flash dryer at 600 degrees sliding down your leg. So put it on casters. And the heads of those flash dryers are ceramics in metal boxes, so they're pretty heavy. You want to make sure the base of the flash dryer is heavier than the top. And you don't want legs sticking out that you can trip over while you're carrying a pile of shirts across the floor. So you want the base underneath the platen eliminating the tripping hazard. So those are some of the tips for your health and your safety, and I hope that I've helped you.